Hello fish fools, Jeff here. So here's a look at my newest aquarium. It's a 29 gallon. I set this up because I wanted another community tank with sailfin mollies and sword tails. And I set this up 10 days ago after I got sailfin mollies and sword tails from my local fish store. And I have since gotten some more fish along the way including some fish that I got three days ago at PetSmarts and Petco's. So I got, among them were these Harlequin Rasboras. So I have four in here now, but I bought eight. And I got five at one PetSmart and three at another PetSmart. And as I showed in my last video, um, when I you know showed the new fish that I got, three of the rasboras died in the bag before I even got a chance to let them out into the tank. Um, but they were with the gourami. There's a male powdered blue gourami back there. The gourami is okay. And the other five that I got at another PetSmart, one of them died yesterday, so there's four in here that remain that, you know, they're swimming around, they, they seem okay. Um, but, you know, that's just an example of how getting fish from PetSmarts and Petcos can be kind of hit or miss. I mean, those, um, chain stores do have a reputation of having sick fish I guess they just don't take care of them properly but um, you know and because of that you know some fish keepers might just never buy fish from them and you know that could be a good thing if they have a good local fish store or other means of getting fish but um, but for, for my experience, you know, I have a, a few local fish stores. I also have, in the Las Vegas Valley, there's maybe between PetSmarts and Petco's, there's, there's probably 20 stores. Um, you know, some are better than others, but, you know, PetSmarts and Petco's, they do sell fish that my local fish stores do not sell. So, you know, it's just additional options. And, you know, I've got some healthy fish from them, and I've got some fish that died, you know, within days. I mean, this, this last one where they died in the bag, that's the first time that's ever happened to me. Um, but, you know, the thing about that is, you know, it can be hit or miss. Um, but, you know, I often show my 30-gallon my planted library community tank, and... A lot of the fish I have in that tank, a lot of the live bearers, are descendants of fish that I got at PetSmart. Um, you know, the the, um, the marigold varietas platys, that whole um, colony of them started from a pair of fish that I got at PetSmart. And, not, and the guppies in that tank are descendants of one, like an original female guppy that I got at PetSmart. Um, but, you know, with that... You know, they might not have the healthiest fish, they might not, not, not take care of them, but, you know, any fish that I do get, I do treat with medications. You know, I wouldn't just get a fish from PetSmart and drop it in my, my 30 gallon with all those other fish. I would quarantine them and treat them first. You know, I, I mean, I, my quarantine method, I, I, I treat them in groups, so... You know, all the fish in here, I'm going to treat with those medications to, you know, to clean them up, make sure they're, you know, clean up any bacterial parasites they might have. You know, I'll treat them with general cure, you know, that serves as a dewormer and it treats for parasites and then... I use erythromycin, which treats for 
you know, different bacterial d diseases. And I also use ICX, which treats for ick and velvet and multiple other fish ailments. So, you know, you can get fish from a pet car, a pet small or a pet co or a pet smart, treat them with those medications and, you know, you can end up with some nice healthy fish after that. But yeah. Well, anyway, so here's what's going on with this aquarium. Um, you know, this is the first look at seeing all the latest fish together swimming around. And, you know, I have this breeder box right here. I've, I've showed, showed that in my last video where when I got the sword tails, these pineapple sword tails, there's a male right there and there's a female. So that female had babies in the bag, as I mentioned in my last video, or I showed them when I first received them two videos ago. That's what I got at my local fish store. And so I decided to just put those, put the fry in this breeder box. And so there's six in here now. And then within a few days after I got the, the mollies, I think five days after that, I had molly fry. So I decided to gather some up. And there's five molly fry in this breeder box. And the molly fry are five days old and the swordtail fry are 10 days old. So the five day old molly fry are bigger than the 10 day old swordtail fry. So I've been feeding them Hikari first bites and cobalt smartemia. And there is also another molly fry on the loose that I didn't gather up. So it's I've been seeing it swimming around in the I have water sprite floating in here. So it you know, if it's the same one that I keep seeing, it has managed to last without getting eaten after five days. And I think it, you know, it might do, do okay without being in the breeder box. And then I'm going to try to get these guys to grow a little bit before I let them go. But then, yeah, so... My plans for this tank is, you know, I'm going to get some more fish. So right now there's the four rasboras. I want to get maybe another four, maybe four or six more to have eight to ten. You know, I'll probably buy six more to make ten, you know, with the chances that I might lose some and then, you know, have a group of eight to swim around. And I know I plan on adding some panda corridors. I have eight in another tank, so I know that I'm going to move those in here. And so that's for that's that's what I'm definitely going to do. But I'm also thinking of adding my roseline shark because I have a a four inch roseline shark in my thirty gallon, and that that tank is heavily planted. I think he might be better off with more swimming space in here. Then I have another um, Rosan shark that's about two inches in another tank. So I was going to move that smaller Rosan shark into my 30 gallon to join the other one, but now I think I'm just going to move both of them in here. I'm not entirely sure sure if that's what I'm going to do, but most likely. And then I was thinking I might get some. Zebra Danios. I just recently watched another video from somebody who got some new fish. Got a neon dwarf gourami, some platies, and some zebra Danios. And then I was just thinking, you know what? I I, I wouldn't mind having some zebra Danios because it, you know, it's cool. Watch them whip around at the top. Good for a community tank like this. And so since the last time I showed this, you know, I'm going to be adding things gradually. So the first thing I added were these pieces of dragonstone that I got at my local fish store. 
or Oko Stone Dragon Rock. So this is my mad aquascaping skills. Putting those two rocks there, and then I clipped a couple stems of Bacopa and just stuck those in there. And you know this, I did put this rock in here. That's going to go back into another tank. I just just for the time being, because it had some algae on it and some ammonia-eating bacteria to get this tank started. But I have another piece of dragonstone. It's a nine-pound piece that I got from Aquarium Co-op a while back. A while back I got, you know, I, I ordered some dragonstone. I ordered 10 pounds, and they sent me a nine pound piece and a one pound piece. So I mean the nine pound piece is pretty big just so I'm wondering if I should just try to smash it and break it into smaller pieces. The one pound piece that's in my three and a half gallon neocaridina shrimp tank. But yeah. And I have some Mopani wood that I'm gonna add in here. I actually have some boiling right now. So I'm gonna add that piece is boiling and then I'm gonna boil another piece or two in the next few days to add in here and I did add this beams work light that I have at the top when I first set this up I just used had this submersible light this was originally in my wild guppy pee puffer tank um, but now I'm just I just left it in here because it has algae on it it's actually not on right now it's just this tank is nice and bright with this new beams work light um, but this one I have is a full spectrum. You can see the reflection here. It has white, blue, green, and red lights. I also have another one that's just mostly white and a few blue lights. And I'll probably do a comparison video of those and, um, at some point. But I'm going to do that after when I actually fill this tank entirely. I left it low like this because you know it's a 29 gallon tank but it's about 20 gallons of water in here right now and I'm gonna leave it like that for when I add the you know the medications that I was talking about because general cure and erythromycin they come in packets and each individual packet treats 10 gallons so if I keep this with just 20 gallons I'll use two packets so after I do that and everything is Good to go I'll add more water to the top and I'll you know I'm gonna add the uh, I have an AquaClear 50 hang on the back filter so I'll add that one when, when that time comes for now I just have the that sponge filter that was already in another tank you know I use that to get going but I have another a bigger sponge filter that I intend to put in here and I have the you know the water sprite floating in there right now so I'm probably going to leave some floating and then bring some down to try to have it grow from the bottom. If you can see this right here, right there, that little stump sticking out of the substrate, that is an Apontagetan bulb. So I mentioned that I was going to use these. So this comes with two Aponagetan Aponagetan Alvaceus so one of the two I already started to put in here I just put that in here today so we'll see if that grows and how that does and then you know I'll add these other bulbs at some point later but I'm also thinking you know I do want to get other plants for this tank and I want to do it different than my my other tanks um, I mentioned I, I want to try to keep this without any Java moss. Um, so for the water sprite, that can serve as a, a fry hideout. You know, as this tank evolves, and you know, this will be the only fish that I'll use in this breeder box. After that, I'm just gonna let them, you know, fry fend for themselves. And I'm thinking I want to get some pearl weed. 
I got some once before in my 30, you know, I put it in my 30 gallon, but it, I was not able to keep it alive. It eventually just dwindled down to nothing, but I want to give it a, another, another try. Like, I don't know what, why I wasn't able to um, have any success with it the first time, but maybe this time there'll be less, it'll start with less plants to compete with um, for nutrients to grow, and maybe different lighting, I don't know, it'll just be, you know, different circumstances, so maybe it'll work out this time. And I'm also thinking of getting Willow High Grow, or Hygrophilia angustifolia. It's a stem plant that kind of is jungle fallish. Or that most likely, but I also possibly might get um, what is it called? The the octopus plant. I forget the the full name of it, but it's another stem plant. And yeah so that's what's going on for now yeah like as far as those plants go like right now I got those plants you know local fish store doesn't sell them and I'll have to order those online but I'll have to wait a little while because it's too hot here. I'll have to wait till it cools down some. And, you know, because I live in the Mojave. What's the Mojave? The Mojave Desert. The Mojave. So, you know, it's 100 degrees still right now. Next week it's going to cool down to below 100 for a few days. But, you know, so I'll probably wait a little bit longer for that before I want to try to order some plants. But, yeah, so, I mean... This tank is going to evolve gradually, and I like it that way. I think it's fun to do that instead of just filling it up with plants all at once. But I'll be doing it little by little and starting small and letting it grow. But yeah, all right. Well, yeah, and I want to get some different snails too. Like right now, I have in this tank, I have three mystery snails and that's actually another reason why I decided to just leave this water low because you know just for the hell of it just in case they try to have some eggs from what I know mystery snails will come up out of the water and lay their eggs on the glass if there's space between you know water and the top of the, the tank so you know, that's probably unlikely, but just in case, just for the hell of it, but yeah, so mystery snails. I'll probably get some more mystery snails, but I want to get some ram's horn snails. Some like blue or red ram's horn snails. Because I don't have ram's horn snails in any of my tanks. So once it cools down again, you know, that's another reason. Another thing I want to do, order some online, but wait till it's cooler. And though I have MTS multi-tank syndrome I do not have MTS Malaysian trumpet snails so I think I might want to tr get some of those too yeah all right yeah I mean the fish are looking good in here I think and I think it'll look, be cool with more Harlequin Rasbores to join this group, and then when I get Corridors in here, when I move them over to have eight Panda Corridors scurrying around, that'd be cool. Alright, well that's it for now, and remember, I'm Jeff, and I enjoy fishies. Thanks for watching.